U.S.-Canadian border drug bust. Inviting all nonprofit organizations. Hi, I'm Ann Ludwig. And I'm Eric Irwin, and welcome to Public Eye News. A Quebec man was arrested at the International Bridgeport Plaza port of entry in Sault Ste. Marie after police found a cereal box filled with meth and ecstasy. According to a criminal complaint, Morian Rosingham hired Uber driver Ali Achu to take him to Edmonton, Alberta on November 9th, but authorities stopped the car at the bridge after smelling of marijuana. Achu gave police the marijuana that was in his pocket, but after further investigation of the vehicle, they found six pounds of narcotics hidden in a cereal box. Rosingham faces a charge of conspiracy to distribute and possession with intent to deliver a controlled substance. He is set to appear for a preliminary exam on Thursday. No charges have been brought against Achu. Construction on Marquette's new city municipal service center is underway, and a ceremony today honored the final beam of the main structure. Members from the Iron Workers Local 8, Gunlock Champion Incorporated, and city government officials, including Marquette Mayor Dave Campana, signed the last beam before it was set in place. The American flag and a Christmas tree were also placed on the top of the beam. Because of recent mild weather, the construction is ahead of schedule. They look forward to having it completed on time and staying under budget. The Superior Health Foundation is currently inviting nonprofit organizations with a health center mission to sum submit a funding request. The SHF Gala Planning Committee will select two health centered projects of $10,000 or less and award them for their annual gala, which will be held in September in Marquette. The foundation will accept applications through Monday, December 12, 2016, and select two nonprofit projects by late December. These projects will then be forwarded to the SHF Board of Directors for approval in January. Officials at Nagani Public Schools say that damage done at the concession stand at the football complex could have been much worse. The damage resulted after 33-year-old Gerald Povin drove his vehicle into building on Sunday. Most of the damage done was to the exterior wall, but none, one of the interior walls is cracked and the toilet is broken. Potvin faces charges of reckless driving leaving the scene of the accident and failing to report the accident. He is set to be arraigned in Marquette County District Court on November 22nd. Authorities say several businesses in downtown Charlevoix are heavily damaged after a fire Sunday. Crews responded to, a put, to put out the fire and smoke filled the downtown area that is a popular tourist destination. Investigators believe the fire started at Johan's Cafe and spread to neighboring Round Lake Gallery. The cause of the fire is still under investigation. WPBN-TV reports damage to at least four other nearby businesses. And Flint Mayor Karen, Mayor Karen Weaver has asked for a renewal of the state emergency it was declared over the water crisis. A resolution is on the agenda to approve or deny the request at tonight's Flint City Council meeting. The resolution, resolution states that Mayor Weaver believes it is imperative that the state of emergency remains in place until Flint's drinking water is deemed safe to drink without a filter. Test results have shown a drop in lead levels in some homes after the state replaced 300 lead taints and lines to homes. The city hopes to replace 1,000 lines by the end of the year. And stay tuned because after the break we'll be back with your national and international news. Tune in for Max Raba and Palace Orchestra performing music from the golden 20s and 30s, including songs made famous by Cole Porter, Louis Armstrong, Ella Fitzgerald, and others in their new concert performance from Berlin, Let's Do It. Coming December 4th on Public TV 13. U.S. prisons are experimenting with an injection that could help um, addicted inmates stay off opioids after they are released. A single shot of Vivitrol given in the buttocks and lasts for four weeks, but each shot costs about $1,000 because of the limited track record. Proponents of the drug say it could save about $25,000 per year for each dr drug offender. However, doctors say that more evidence is needed to determine whether the medication is worth paying for. 
President-elect Donald Trump sat down with 60 Minutes for his first interview since winning the election last Tuesday. The wide-ranging discussion covered a number of topics, including his famous call to build a wall along the U.S.-Mexico border. Craig Boswell is at the White House with the more details. President-elect Donald Trump tells 60 Minutes' Leslie Stahl that his campaign pledges were starting points for negotiations, including the wall along the U.S.-Mexico border. Would you accept defense? Uh, for certain areas, I would, but certain areas the wall is more appropriate. I'm very good at this. It's called construction. But that doesn't mean he's going soft on immigration. The people that are criminal and have criminal records, gang members, drug dealers, we have a lot of these people, probably two million, it could even be three million. We're getting them out of our country or we're going to incarcerate. It's an idea that has some support in Congress. If somebody has broken a major felony, do you still want them inside the country when they broke the law to come in in the first place? Running the White House for President-elect Trump will be Wright's Priebus. Mr. Trump has selected the RNC chairman to be his new chief of staff. Priebus is considered the ultimate Washington insider with close ties to congressional leaders, including House Speaker Paul Ryan. Mr. Trump also tapped Stephen Bannon as his White House chief strategist and senior counselor. The former CEO of Breitbart News was criticized for using the website as a platform for the alt-right movement, which has been linked to white nationalism. I'm personally offended that you think I would manage a campaign where that would be one of the going philosophies. It was not. As for the nationwide protests against him, Mr. Trump says Americans shouldn't be afraid of his administration and that he plans to bring the country together. Craig Boswell, CBS News, the White House. And welcome back. The outgoing U.S. climate envoy says China and other countries will stay committed to the Paris Agreement on climate change regardless of what the next U.S. administration decides. At U.N. climate talks today in Morocco, Jonathan Pershing said he is unsure of Trump's view on climate policy. However, Pershing insists that the rest of signing countries intend to move forward. Trump has called the global warming a hoax on social media and has made previous promises to cancel the Paris deal during his campaign. And residents in New Zealand have started to assess the damage after a major earthquake hit in the middle of the night, killing at least two people. Emergency officials say hundreds of residents are staying in shelters, and 1,000 tourists are stranded in a small town popular for whale-watching expeditions. Hannah Daniels has the latest. Strong aftershocks Ooh. continue to shake New Zealand this morning after a magnitude 7.8 earthquake struck the country's South Island, cracking roads and demolishing homes and businesses. It's just a bloody shame. That's all brick and mortar, but you don't bring the people back. The powerful tremors have triggered landslides. These three cows, along with other livestock, were stranded on islands of grass as the ground ripped apart around them. The aftershocks continue to rattle the nerves of already exhausted and terrified residents. The quake triggered a tsunami about six feet high. Residents along the East Coast were told to move to higher ground. Damage to the main highway has completely cut off the small rural town of Kaikoura, where emergency officials say 1,000 tourists are stranded. Uh, the road access points here are blocked off. The only way through is uh, flying people in and out. There's quite a number of tourists now who are ultimately stuck with international connections. The head of New Zealand's Civil Defence Force says a Navy ship is on the way to help ferry people who are isolated to safety. Hannah Daniels, CBS News. Day three of the World Chess Championship is underway in New York City after Friday and Saturday's games ended in a draw. After the next few weeks, defending champion Magnus Carlsen of Norway will face Sergei Karjakin of Russia, both of which are considered among the best chess players in the world. The two have squared off 47 times. Karjakin has won eight times, Carlsen won 18 and 21 have ended in a draw. The prize of winning is just over a million dollars, which will be split 60 to 40. And stay tuned because after the break, we will have your weather and sports. The whole era of music at that time just exploded. <laughs> 
It's the birth of a new art form. They were starting to make music that couldn't exist outside of a recording studio. You know, recording's a really personal matter, and you dig deep, and you want to be naked. It was so much about breaking some rules and telling your own story. There's always that verse, that voice, that beat that's going to save your life. Coming November 14th at 10 p.m. on Public TV 13. Hi, and welcome back to Public Eye News. I'm Ann Ludwig. As you can see outside, it's cloudy and a little bit cold, so grab a jacket if you're planning on going outside. Our current conditions, it is cloudy with a temperature of 46, winds north-northeast at 10 miles per hour, and our pressure is 29.87 inches and rising. And tonight we're looking at cloudy skies, a low of 41, and winds north-northeast at 7 miles per hour. And tomorrow, some afternoon showers, a high of 53, and winds southwest at 8 miles per hour. Looking across the UP, in Sault Ste. Marie, 57 and sunny, 58 Manistique and sunny, 58 in Escanaba and partly sunny, and 53 in Menominee and partly sunny. Over here in Iron Mountain is 55 and cloudy, Ironwood 53 and cloudy, and here in Houghton 46 and cloudy, and back in Marquette 46 and cloudy. Let's take a look at your week ahead. On Wednesday, a high of 49, low of 40, and partly cloudy. Thursday, a high of 55, low of 44, and mostly cloudy. And on Friday, a high of 58, low of 41, and partly cloudy. So Eric, we're looking at some not so good weather this weekend, and I also hear we didn't have the greatest weekend for football. No, Northern kind of fell again, and their, uh, se their season record kind of displays their new coaching directions going forward, so let me tell you about it. The Northern Michigan football team closed the 2016 season by take, taking on Tiffin at Frost Kalnow Stadium Saturday afternoon. The Wildcats held the Dragons to just two touchdowns in the second half, but could not overcome an early deficit. They ultimately fell 56-7. Northern Michigan got on the board at the 3:34 mark of the third quarter when Geronta Lewis, who was making his first start at quarterback since 2014, found Julian Crum for a six-yard score. Shea Brown missed the game due to medical reasons. He wrapped up his collegiate career as the Wildcats leader in career passing yards, touchdowns, completions, and attempts. He also holds a single season records in touchdowns and passing yards, both of which were set in 2015. With the loss, Northern Michigan finished with a 3-8 record. Marcus Mariota threw it for 295 yards and four touchdowns, and the Tennessee Titans routed the Green Bay Packers 47-25 yesterday. Five different Titans scored a touchdown in the first half as Tennessee put together its best scoring performance this season with 35 points. With the win, the Titans also matched the five victories over the past two seasons combined. DeMarco Murray set the tone on the opening play from scrimmage, running 75 yards for a touchdown. Rodgers and Mariota came into this game tied for the most TD passes in the NFL over the previous five weeks with 13. Rodgers threw for 371 yards and two touchdowns, and he also ran for another. But Mariota completed his first 10 passes as Tennessee jumped on Green Bay at the start and ultimately pummeled the pack. And some of the best Seahawks teams under Pete, coach Pete Carroll have been the ones that gradually improved throughout the season. Seattle's latest climb may be underway. The Seahawks have put together perhaps their most balanced 60 minutes on both sides of the ball this season in Sunday's night's 31-24 win over the New England Patriots. Not only did Seattle, six to two and, uh, who are 6-2, force Tom Brady into his first interception this season, but it kept him without a passing touchdown for the first time in 2016 and denied the Patriots an opportunity to tie the game with a goal line stand in the closing minute. So, and this Donald, Donald Trump election has kind of got everyone going crazy, but someone is doing some other crazy things about it. Yeah, down. let me tell you about it. A Princeton University polling expert who said he would eat a bug if Donald Trump got more than 240 electoral votes has followed through on his promise. Sam Wang ate a can of gourmet style crickets and added in some honey. He said John the Bast at Baptist ate lotus and honey in the wilderness and he considers, considers himself to be in the wilderness as well. Thank you for tuning in to Public Eye News today. We'll be back here tomorrow, but for now, have a great rest of your day.